Hey guys, welcome to part two of 29 Years of Movies, 29 Years of Favorites. For those who missed part one, go back and watch part one if you haven't watched it yet. Um, I'm basically trying to cover every year that I've been alive and trying to figure out what my favorite films from each year is from when I've been born to the present. Um, so we've gone through 1990 through 1998. So I'm about to talk about my favorite film of 1999. But like I said, go back and watch part one if you haven't done so yet. Um, hopefully I can cover the rest of this list in this video. If not, we're going to have to make a part three to this. So let's see how this plays out. So at 1999, we have The Iron Giant. Um, I love this movie. And like I said, 1999, for those who saw part one, is a very important movie movie year. You know, we had The Sixth Sense that year. We had Fight Club that year. We had American Beauty that year. Um, just so many big revolutionary films that kind of... Um, showed people just how creative and how different we can make films and how an ending of a film could be so crucial or how a big reveal could really change the way you watch that film on that second viewing Fight Club if you ever saw it. Um, American Beauty was just so different. It was exploring things that people weren't comfortable covering in film quite yet, things like that. Um, but for my personal favor from that year, once again, this is a film that I personally remember seeing that this certain year in film and certain... You know, I saw it in the theater and everything like that. Um, it's, like I said, it's um, 1999 is The Iron Giant. Uh, I just love this movie. It's just so out there and different. And it really teaches kids and parents and families um, that you can make films about kind of uncomfortable things. You can, you know, you can cover atomic bombs in movies. You can cover um, death in movies. You can cover things that maybe are not the most comfortable to talk about. But The Iron Giant, <clears throat> Brett, director Bad Bird found such an interesting, different way to comfort us about these things and comfort us about, um, you know, are we really just kind of living amongst each other and there's rocks and trees and we're just kind of here? Or is there really something out there? Is there really something out there that we can relate to and kind of feels the way we feel and kind of fears death the way we fear death, fears atomic bombs the way we would fear atomic bombs. Because I think this film was roughly in the 60s somewhere when it took place. So that was kind of a really big deal back then. Um, it's such a great film about friendship and about leadership and about if somebody's doing something wrong, it's important that we kind of teach them not to do that. Um, there's just so many great things that the Iron Giant covers that I absolutely love about it. I've rewatched it so many times over the years. Uh, it's my favorite film from 1999. And like I said, a film that I actually personally remember seeing in the theater. At 2000, we have the film Unbreakable. Um, I'm still kind of lost and not sure if Sixth Sense or Unbreakable is my favorite M. Night Shyamalan film, but for the year 2000, it was definitely my favorite film for that year. Um, it's such a great movie. It's such a great movie about superheroes and about comic books and about if superheroes were real, kind of how would that play out? What would that look like if supervillains were real? How would that look? How would that feel? How would that person go about that life if they found out that they were a supervillain to someone else. Um, there, There's even a conversation in the movie that's really interesting with Sam L. Jackson talking about how if he's on one side of the spectrum, who would be on the other end? Since his bones break easily, that means somebody's bones don't break so easily. Um, so there's interesting ideas like that. Um, there's just so many interesting different things about it that M. Night Shyamalan... Um, tried with the superhero genre, and it really works well to this day. Um, I really can't say the same about Glass and about Split, unfortunately, but Unbreakable for sure was one of my favorite M. Night Shyamalan films, uh, easily my favorite film of 2000. For 2001, uh, once again, a very different choice. Uh, like I said, I'm sure there's many more well-crafted films that came out that year, but for me personally, uh, my favorite film of 2001 was Shallow Hell. Um, and once again, I love the Farley Brothers. Um, obviously, they directed Green Book recently, which was a huge hit at the Oscars, and I just really like that movie also. But um, Shallow Hell is such a great movie because it has such a great message. It really does teach us that don't just always judge by the outside of people, you know, really kind of get a chance to know them, learn their personality, learn what they're like, um, learn what their passions are, learn what they do for a living. Um, and I think it, it, that's really important. I think that's a very important, good trait to have as a human being is just to kind of give people a chance. Who knows? You might fall in love like Hal did. You might 
meet somebody under unusual circumstances. Um, it's just such a great movie. Yes, there's some very crude, not necessarily necessary things about certain qualities of people that we really can't bring up here, but um, it's such a great comedy. It has such a great message to it, and you really kind of feel for a lot of the characters here. There's even a really heartbreaking conversation that Gwyneth Feltro has with Jack Black of how she doesn't think she's beautiful and how Jack Black's just so heartbroken and so lost as to how somebody could feel that way about themselves. Um, it's such a heart-touching movie that really kind of yanks at my heartstrings and I just absolutely love everything about it. So 2001, my favorite film for that year was Shallow Hell. At 2002, we actually have one of my all-time favorite movies that came out that year and that's Adaptation from one of my favorite directors, Spike Jones. Um, very good movie. Definitely one of my favorite executions of a movie. I love the idea of a screenwriter given this book that's impossible to adapt into a movie and so the movie becomes him um, finding a way to adapt that impossible material into a movie that would work and put him as one of the characters and put the people that were involved with making this movie into characters for the film and things like that. Um, very unique, different. One of the best film-watching experiences I've ever had was watching Adaptation. Just see it be original. See it be something different. See it be something that I absolutely love. Um, see a great director kind of work at his fullest potential. See Charlie Kaufman pursue probably one of my favorite screenplays he's ever written. Um, I absolutely love Adaptation. It's my favorite film from 2002. At 2003, we have another all-time favorite of mine, and that's Bruce Almighty. Probably one of the few films I've ever rated a 10 out of 10 to, and like I said, that's definitely a huge compliment for me. I, I don't give out 10 out of 10 very often. Uh, Bruce Almighty is pretty much a near-perfect comedy for me. I just love everything about it. I really would struggle to give you a flaw about it. I really think it's one of Jim Carrey's best films he's ever done. Uh, the comedy is so great. The message is so strong. Bruce Almighty is also one of those films, too, where I honestly can say I left the theater as a better person seeing it. Um, I just love the message behind it. I love how to be the miracle, to really just... You know, if God doesn't come and help you right away, that doesn't mean he's abandoning you or leaving you alone. It just means that maybe there's something about your execution of something that isn't correct or not the way you should be pursuing it. And there's just so many interesting, great, religious, philosophical, just great messages about life, even if you're not all that religious or not even a part of the Christian religion. Um, it's such a great, important movie Bruce Almighty is not only one of my all-time favorite films of all time, it's easily my favorite film from 2003 also. At 2004, we have a film that I think I like more and more as I get older just because it's, it's so relatable and so fun and has such a great execution to it. And there's even a lot of hidden messages in it too. Um, and that's this film Sideways from Alexander Payne. Um, I love this movie. It's such a fun road trip movie. Definitely a perfect example of how to do a great road trip movie. Um, I'm not a big wine person, but Sideways has definitely interested me in learning more about wine if I ever choose to learn more about it. Um, I love Paul Giamatti's character. So relatable, so fun. Uh, I even have a good friend of mine that the chemistry between himself and Thomas Hayden Church is definitely the chemistry I have between me and this other friend that definitely reminds me of this, not really a road trip, but this kind of this big event that him and I were a part of about a year ago uh, around the time this video was filmed. Such a great, fun movie. Um, I go back to it all the time. It's so fun to watch. It's my favorite film from 2004. At 2005, we have the film Hitch, another great fun film I keep going back to. It's on television all the time, I know, so I'm sure some of you are sick of seeing it, but um, I really like it a lot. It's such a great romance comedy for men. There's not a lot of them out there, unfortunately, and there really should be. Will Smith is so great as Alex Hitchens. He's such a great, likable character. He actually has a lot of good advice for men and women in this movie about dating. Um, definitely a lot of things that I myself kind of approach in life as to how to make sure somebody knows I care about them and how I love them. Um, it's a very funny film, too. There's a lot of great funny moments in it. Um, Hitch is such a great fun time. Probably one of my favorite Will Smith movies next to a film that I'm going to be talking about here for 2007. But um, great movie. Absolutely love it. It's my favorite film from 2005. 
At 2006, we have Rocky Balboa. I love the Rocky series in general. Uh, and believe it or not, Rocky Balboa from 2006 is probably one of my favorite Rocky movies. Such a great, strong movie. I love the motivational speech he gives to his son about it's not about um, getting hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Um, I love the villain they use in this. I like the motivation behind the villain in this, too. Um, I really believe Rocky was not too old for this story. I really like how they found just the right story to bring the Rocky character back to life for the big screen. Uh, Sylvester Stallone directed this movie with so heart, so much heart and so much love. Same with writing and producing this film as well. Rocky Balboa is easily my favorite film from 2006. At 2007, we have I Am Legend. Uh, so I love the movie Hitch. I love I Am Legend even more, and it's my favorite Will Smith performance ever. Um, he really does do so much with being there on the set all and by himself, talking to mannequins in a way that you really believe like he's pursuing a conversation with somebody. Um, it has so many interesting ideas and messages of what if what would you do if you really were the last person alive on Earth. Um, there's so many uh, bigger questions and issues they cover about if you really were the last person, kind of what would be your breaking point when you found out that you're really never going to see another person again and things like that. Um, there's a very heartbreaking scene with a dog in this that still breaks my heart to this day watching it. Um, it was easy, my most memorable film experience from 2007. I just remember being really intrigued by it when it first came out. My dad and I saw it. And it's probably one of my dad's favorite films too. He loves this movie. Um, 2007 was easily... Uh, I Am Legend, but easily my favorite film from that year. And at 2008, we have one of my all-time favorite films, and my all-time favorite, probably my number one favorite of all time, and that's Iron Man from John Favreau. I love this movie. It's perfect. It has perfect action scenes, perfect characters, perfect performances, a perfect villain. Um, it really brings the MCU to its fullest potential, and we've had tons of great films since Iron Man that were really good MCU films, but this film is just so amazing in its comedy and its action, the way it opens, the way the opening connects to later stuff in the movie, uh, the villain, just, I, I love everything about Iron Man. John Bro made the perfect movie. I absolutely loved everything he did in that movie. Perfect film, easily my favorite film from 2008 and of all time. And at 2009, we have Where the Wild Things Are. Um, I love this movie. Once again, Spike Jones is one of my all-time favorite directors. He directed the film with so much heart, uh, with so much passion. Even Maurice Sendek himself, who wrote the Where the Wild Things Are book, thinks that it actually improved the story upon the book. And there's really not a lot of authors who can say that about film adaptations. Um, I like how he used kind of these Muppet costumes rather than CGI for a lot of the the creatures in it and things like that. There's so many interesting ideas about uh, kind of how valuable your mentors are and finding out about yourself is and kind of being yourself and not being too scared of being what someone else tells you to be and things like that. So I absolutely love Where the Wild Things Are, my favorite film from 2009. So I think we're definitely going to have to do a part three, you guys. I have still a couple more films to talk about here. So I'll see you back here for part three of this video.